itself, Samsung has gone ahead and pushed the biggest change ever in Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Yes, we are talking about the Oreo update. It's finally come, which has brought a lot of changes to the device. I'm going to start with the smallest of the change, but was awaited for more than four to five years now. Yes, what you see on the right bottom of my screen is the Gmail app. And guess what? It has a badge now. Now it can give you the unread messages email details and you can figure it out from the badge that how many emails are unread. Woo! Thank you so much Samsung for doing that. We've been waiting for this feature for years now and you finally nailed it. Thanks once again. All right, swiftly moving on to the keyboard section. Now what you're able to see is the top row, which used to be the number keypad is now replaced with emojis and settings. Uh, it's pretty simple out here. The moment you press this, you can get the suggestions of the words that you're typing. And the moment you toggle it, you get the list of emojis that you can select and send it. All this while, we didn't have this feature, rather you had to go ahead and press and hold to go to the second page of the keypad to use all this feature. They've kind of bought it, it seems nice and looks pretty decent. Talking about the accessibility feature, they have kind of gone ahead and enabled users to go ahead and change the screen background, uh, whatever suits to their eyes. For example, uh, here there's an option called as color lens. If I just switch it on and you will see I can change the tone of my screen and keep it either yellowish, orangish, reddish, bluish, azure, cyan, and multiple colors. Honestly, I'm not very much impressed with this. I like the default color and I feel it is really nice. As far as camera section goes, not big changes introduced here, but there's a small button that you see, which, is, which enables you to click uh, and get the entire camera onto the full screen mode. The moment you click on this again, it comes to the 4 is to 3 aspect ratio, which is 12 megapixel. And please make a note of it. The moment you click on this, though it's a full screen, but now you will be shooting images in 9 megapixel. It's a good change for people who don't really bother whether they're clicking on what megapixel they want to. Talking about connectivity, um, we have seen a small change, which is a a very nice change to have in your phone. Uh, let's go to connect connections and Wi-Fi. Guess what you see here? Under advanced options, now you have a facility to turn on Wi-Fi automatically based on your favorite locations. Yes, this device is now smart enough to understand and identify the often Wi-Fi modem that you connect with and it will automatically switch on and connect with those devices whenever you're around. So you don't have to really go ahead and manually change it. Another big thing that they have introduced is they have now allowed users to save on battery. Yes, Wi-Fi is one of the features that drains your battery drastically. Considering Samsung S8, which only has about 3000 milliamp battery, you need to save on battery. So the moment you switch on this feature, it will allow the Wi-Fi to sleep in the background whenever it is not used. The moment uh, you start using internet, it will automatically wake up and start consuming data and battery both. So it's a smart feature and good to have in your phone. Oh, well, 3D touch, all this while you have only heard this term in iPhone, but this time, Samsung has also enabled all their default application and hear me again whatever pre-installed Samsung applications are there now they allow users to press and hold and uh, you know kind of a 3d touch if I may say so you can just press and hold a little harder and directly go and create contact or groups or probably in a messaging app you can press and hold create messages without going into the messaging app directly if you see, if I press and hold WhatsApp app, it does. It is still not enabled with a 3D touch, which I'm sure will come very soon. Now let's quickly talk about display. Under display, we have navigation bar. Guess what now? Now home screen, you can actually test 
how much pressure are you applying if you recollect it wasn't there in the earlier version I generally keep it to the lighter mode because I don't really want to press my screen hard but the bottom line is you can now gauge the sensitivity of the screen in terms of graph which is good to have feature not that it, they have changed the sensitivity but now they have demonstrated on the screen which is really nice talking about some advanced feature this device has um, the finger sensor gesture is now not only enabled to go ahead and swipe down to bring about the notification panel but it also allows you to go ahead and open the Samsung Pay application all this while it was at the bottom when you go out to the home screen you swipe it up for few people it was convenient for few it was not but now they have allowed people to go ahead and you know customize it with the with the fingerprint gesture behind I'm not gonna use this I don't like it swiftly moving to the always-on display yes this is something which was introduced by LG first later on it was pioneered by Samsung and that's why they keep doing it right uh, well under this option let's go and see what's new they have to offer uh, the moment you go to always on display menu and you go to settings this is what they have done yes now you can go ahead and change the width and the length of the always on display which was never there they have added few new fonts to it and now you can even change the styles put in the calendar or probably use the favorite picture that you want to use it for the best thing that they have done here in this category is now they allow you to change the color of always on display if you recollect this is how you it used to look like now you can change the color to blue da 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 and da 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 you see well <laughs> It's the most welcome change, I think. It looks and it looks and feels pretty neat when your phone is locked. As we all know, Samsung S8 has got a curved screen. When we talk about curved screen, the only use to have a curved screen is to use the applications on the edge screen. Yes, this is how it used to be earlier. You swipe, you swipe, you swipe, and then you access whatever tasks you want to do. Look at the three bars at the bottom the moment you click this yuppie all those applications uh, which are there on the edge panel are now in the card format so you don't really have to go ahead and swipe it but you just directly come here select whatever you want and carry on with your multitasking lovely good brain applied small thing but a big change well all these devices allow you to go ahead and do a lot of multitasking right so what you do you press recent button and then you go ahead and open apps that you want to use it to multitask uh, if you see the card size has become a little bigger and you still scroll to go ahead and figure out what application you want to toggle it with but guess what there is a small change now you can change the view and get it to list view oh wow Oh wow this is amazing this doesn't even takes a lot of space but at a glance it gives me an overview of how many applications are open and I can actually jump to any other application with less of the swipe or a toggle I think this is a beautiful feature they should have done long before but never the late talking about notifications um, swiping down your screen to check your latest messages has been a treat to your eyes but now it has gone to the next level all I need to do is swipe it to the left and I can snooze the notification for 15 30 one hour or two hours you can customize the way you want to Wow that's a great feature to have it in your phone you don't really have to go to the settings and change it for each and every application it allows you right at the notification bar nicely done so guys these these were top 13 biggest changes I have seen in today's update I'm sure there is yet a lot to encounter and I'm gonna keep you guys posted in the meantime signing out for today all right guys these were the top 13 big change that were introduced with the latest Oreo update in Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 plus 
I'm sure there will be a lot of the small changes which are there in the device which are yet to be discovered which I will do so and keep you guys posted. In the meantime, have fun. Bye-bye.